Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Kirsten's Corner. Today I have a beginner's guide to reading Kristen Hanna. So if you don't know, Kristen Hanna is an author who writes predominantly historical fiction books. A lot of her books have been turned into Netflix series or feature films, things like that. So she definitely is a well-known author. And she also happens to be my favorite author of all time. I have an entire stack of her books here. These are just my favorite books of all time. I love them. And they're also coming out with like new covers for her books. And I just, I love them. So I buy them whenever I see them. So yes, these are my babies and yeah. So today I'm going to be giving you my top five suggestions for Kristen Hanna books if you haven't read Kristen Hanna before or if you're looking for Kristen Hanna books to read. So let's jump into the video. Now I would be remiss and honestly it probably wouldn't be my channel if I didn't talk about my favorite book of all time first. So The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. This is far and away my favorite book of all time. Whenever anyone asks me for a book suggestion, this is always my first book that comes to mind. It's always immediately what I say. It got me through a very hard time. Over Christmas in 2020, my grandfather was in the hospital with bacterial pneumonia. We couldn't go visit him. We didn't celebrate Christmas. And I just read this book on the couch the whole time. And it just gave me such a warm, fuzzy feeling. So now when I think about it, I just get so happy and like such a soft spot and my grandfather's fine now but it just it is such a heart-wrenching thing but it is such just like a happy thing for me to think about when I think about this book. So this book takes place starting in the 70s and then spans about 40 years and we follow the Albrights and this family moves from Washington to Alaska because the father of the family just got back from the Vietnam War where he was serving for America. And his best friend actually sadly got killed in the war and left his entire estate in Alaska to the father of the Albright family. So the family moves up to Alaska and they really live in deep woods, Alaska. They live off the land. They have to hunt and fish for their food for water. They have to like go out and boil it. They have a very small tight knit community but it is super small and they're just very much so off the grid. Initially it seems like a really good idea to move to Alaska because the father of the family has severe PTSD from the Vietnam War. He is struggling so much with what he went through and sadly at this time PTSD was just not something that was widely recognized. It was not something that people really cared about. They didn't want to treat people who had it so it really just wasn't acknowledged or treated. So we follow as the family evolves from the time that the daughter Lenny is eight years old all the way until she is a grown woman and sadly, the entire family has to deal with the trauma that the father has because of the PTSD. I would look up the trigger warnings for this book. I won't say them now because I don't want to spoil anything. However, I do have a resource linked down below if you do have certain triggers and you want to see if they're in this book. Obviously, as you can tell, this book is kind of chunky. It has about 550 pages. However, it absolutely flies by. This is kind of what spurred my adult book reading. Before I read this book, I really didn't read many adult books because I just thought they were so intimidating. However, this book definitely proved me wrong. It is by no means plot driven. It is a deep character study into the mother, father, and daughter of this family and just really the horrible impact that war can have on people and also a really good look at what life living off the grid in Alaska is like. So definitely highly recommend this book. If you're going to take one suggestion from this video, definitely pick up The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. The next two books I'm going to talk about are actually part of a series, and that is the Firefly Lane Girls series. So first I have Firefly Lane, and then I have the sequel, Fly Away. And these books have actually been turned into a Netflix series. I have a spoiler-filled and spoiler free review of the Netflix series up on my channel if you do want to check them out. So these two books follow Tully and Kate and they are absolute best friends. 
Again, this is a multi-generational tale. We follow Tully and Kate from the time that they are young girls in elementary school all the way up until they have children of their own. Tully and Kate really could not be much more different from each other than they are. However, they love each other more than anything and they are always a constant in each other's lives. So Tully ends up being a really world famous newscaster. She's a journalist. She absolutely loves what she does. And Kate ends up settling down, getting married, having a family and being a stay at home mom. And we just follow these girls as they grow throughout their life and as they kind of just mature into the people that they are. Again, not a plot driven book, complete character study. There is no plot, but I love these books with my whole heart. This second book here, while it is a sequel, it kind of gives a lot of backstory to other characters in Firefly Lane as well as Tully and Kate. Like we still have Tully and Kate in this book, but it is a lot of backstory into other characters in Firefly Lane. For instance, Tully's mother, who isn't really present in her life. So I thought Fly Away was just such a good sequel. I highly recommend Firefly Lane and Fly Away. Definitely read Firefly Lane first. You cannot read Fly Away without reading Firefly Lane. Don't do it. However, one really major thing that I would like to point out is that Firefly Lane is the only book ever in my whole entire life to make me cry. I sobbed for the last like 50 pages of this book and I never do that. I am very cold hearted, very just like no emotion, don't really care. I like pretending like I don't have emotion. However, this book absolutely wrecked me. I distinctly remember I was reading it while my boyfriend was driving to my house and I opened the door and I was just sobbing and then I read the last like 10 pages while he was like comforting me it just destroyed me if you don't cry at Firefly Lane I mean I don't know I don't know what because even I cried so Firefly Lane and Fly Away are definitely my number two and three recommendations for Kristen Hanna and of course I recommend you watch the Netflix show however if you have already watched the Netflix show, they changed a lot from the book. So what happens in the Netflix show does not happen in the books. The books go a completely different route. So if you already watched the show, it will not spoil the books for you at all. The next book that I'm going to talk about is being turned into a movie that I believe is like going to the movie theater movie, like it's not just like a TV movie, but that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This book, again, like most of Kristen Hanna's books, is really chunky. This one's about 570 pages and it is, again, not plot driven. It is very much so a character study. In this book, we follow two sisters, Isabelle and Vienne, and they are living in Nazi occupied Paris during World War II. And these two sisters have a very, very different experience of what World War II is. So one sister stays at home, kind of tries to help the war effort as much as she can, while still supporting her family, running her household, helping her neighborhood, things like that. And then that same sister actually ends up having a German soldier quartered in her house. So she ends up having to live with a German soldier while living in Nazi occupied France with her husband fighting the war for France. And then we follow Vienne and she is kind of more hands on with the war effort. She's really trying to just help fight the Nazis and we follow her and just her experiences more so on the hands on front of the war. And I absolutely love this book because it just showed female strength, female power, what women could do during the war effort things like that. Definitely something that a lot of people don't really shine light on or don't really talk about. So this book is very good. It is probably the most popular of Kristen Hanna's books. It's my like fourth favorite Kristen Hanna. So it's definitely not my favorite, but I know it is the most popular, probably the most widely read and also probably the most like likely that someone would pick up just on a whim. The final book that I'm going to recommend, I personally did not like. However, it has amazing reviews on Goodreads, so I feel like I kind of had to include it in this beginner's guide. That is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. I have an entire review dedicated to this book up on my channel. My boyfriend and I filmed it together. It's an absolute riot if you want to watch that. However, I ended up giving this book two stars, 
Looking back, I think I would give it three stars. I have given every other Kristen Hanna five stars though, so that's saying a lot. So this book is a historical fiction book set in the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. And in this book, we follow our main character, Elsa, who up and moves her family from Texas out west. And she is going west in hopes of just making a better life for herself, making a better life for her family, and things like that. However, when she makes it out west, she finds that they're really not welcoming. They really do not want people coming out there. They really don't want people like her taking their jobs, living there, anything like that. So it's really just a struggle the whole time. This book is still pretty chunky. It looks like it's not as chunky, but it's because the book is taller. This is probably, no, this definitely is my least favorite Kristen Hanna book that I've ever read. However, again, a lot of people absolutely love it, so I feel like I had to put it on this list. Okay, so that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know if any of you enjoy reading Kristen Hanna, if you plan on reading Kristen Hanna, things like that. Definitely let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads so that you can keep up with me all the time. And until next time, happy reading. Bye!